Hi, I'm Mario Batali. Welcome to Italy, a food lover's paradise. Today we're cooking for Debbie from Snowflake, Arizona. First ingredient, chorizo. I'd say about a half pound of that chorizo. Thank you, sir. Next up, potatoes. I like the waxy yellow versions called Yukon Golds. Got the spuds? Next up, jalapenos. I feel them. I feel them back here. Next up, artichokes. Now, artichokes aren't in season right now, so I love these ones that are packed in oil. And let's go back to the kitchen. Back in the kitchen, today I'm cooking for Debbie from Snowflake, Arizona, who chose chorizo, potatoes, jalapenos, and artichokes. And I thought immediately, how about we make an excellent frittata? So I'm taking some eggs, I'm going to add some Parmigiano-Reggiano to it, a pinch of coarse salt, and I'm just gonna break them up. I cracked 12 eggs, I add no milk, I add no water, I just use the eggs, because I like it to be a little denser. Now I'm gonna take some of this beautiful chorizo and I'm gonna cut it into little cubes. I want as much of that flavor around and yet what's significant to me in a frittata is that I have the creamy, cloud-like, perfectly cooked eggs ubiquitous to the every bite. And the chorizo and any other ingredient that would go in it is more or less just the flavoring that kind of dances in and dances out. So now I'm gonna take some extra virgin olive oil I'm gonna get it in a non-stick pan that can go in the oven because the frittata needs to go in the oven. And I'm gonna get the chorizo in first. It's not going in a hot pan, it's going in a cold pan, so it slowly comes up so that it doesn't seize up when I go. I'm gonna start with that, then I'm gonna take a jalapeno. How spicy do you like it, Debbie from Snowflake? I knew you liked it just as spicy as me. I'm gonna leave the seeds and the ribs in and I'm gonna cut it in half so we get smaller as opposed to giant pieces. I like a little bit of texture to happen there. Now I take my potatoes. I like the Yukon Gold potatoes. I think they have a beautiful, more full flavor than say a russet that I might use for a gnocchi. I'm gonna leave the skin on but because I washed it. I'm gonna cut them straight across like that, maybe an eighth of an inch. These will be even smaller than the pieces of chorizo. Then I'm gonna cut them down, straight across like that. I wouldn't blanch them in advance. I want them to give me a little kind of al dente nest, but not too much. And I want the potato flavor to be the most important thing. So we go like that. Now because the potatoes and the jalapenos don't come seasoned, I'm going to take a good pinch of salt now and add it and toss it through. If I wanted these potatoes to become crisp, I wouldn't add any salt. Salt causes the liquid to start to come out. Now I toss that all through like that. Now I'm gonna cook that until the potatoes are just cooked through. That's probably two to three minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna make the bruschetta filling. I got these beautiful canned, almost like pickled artichokes. They're preserved in oil and they're absolutely delicious. Now this is kind of a fancy pantsy already existing antipasto that would be good all by itself but I'm gonna make a bruschetta. So I'm gonna take these artichokes like this and cut them into a little bit smaller than bite-sized pieces, not all finely cut up, because I want not only the flavor of that magnificent artichoke, a member of the thistle family, I want them to be part of the texture as well as the bitterness, which is gonna play against the rich creaminess of the eggs and the tangy, magnificent flavor of that chorizo. Now I save that oil that they come packed in to make an artichoke vinaigrette on another day. But when I'm gonna make a bruschetta topping, I want the artichoke to stop and I want something else to start. So I'm gonna take, oh, I don't know, three or four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna take some garlic, buy garlic whole, smash it like so. I take it on my little microplane and I'll put in almost a whole clove, but when you do it like that, it's not nearly as intense, but it's still really good and I like it that way. I'm gonna take some capers, and then I'm gonna take a nice pinch of freshly chopped parsley and stir that whole thing through. Now I can hear my potatoes starting to slow down the conversation, which means I know that they're ready for the eggs. So I take my eggs, again, eggs, parm, and salt, that's it. And I pour them on like that. Now to make a nice frittata, 
A non-stick pan works perfectly for me, but what also works is a well-seasoned cast iron skillet. And if you have one of those, by all means, use it. So I'm gonna keep moving those like that. You want them to start cooking through just like as if you were gonna make an omelet. Eventually, this is gonna settle almost like a pudding or a budino. The only reason that happens is because we keep stirring right now at the beginning. Now you could whisk this, but that would be French. So we're gonna go like so, and as I can see that they're getting close to the set point, I give them a good stir so that everything is distributed. I go once around that rim, and then I settle them in like that, and I take them to the broiler. Now, I've got excellent bread. I'm gonna take this beautiful ciabatta. I don't want it too thick, but I probably want it about, I don't know, maybe an inch thick like so. And what I do is I cook it dry, press it down like that, and just let it get started. Now, I prepare for when the toast comes off by taking another clove of garlic, and I'm gonna rub it on that just toasted bread, just like they would for a fetunta. A fetunta means una feta unta, which means a greased slice. And it's the way they taste the new oil every November when they harvest it. They just take a little bit of toast, they rub a little garlic, drizzle the new oil right on top of it. it makes everybody extremely happy. Okay, so the frittata cooks through really in four or five minutes because you spend all that time making it just right. And it goes right to the table like that. And I would serve it just like so. Then I would take my fetunta or my bruschetta, take them off. Do it almost just like a delicate sanding. Rub it just so enough so that it picks up the kiss of that garlic without becoming too powerful. Then I take them to the plate. I take the artichokes and I slather them on. And then to finish the frittata, I'm gonna take a little more jalapeno because I'm feeling it. Just the rounds until I hit the seeds right there over the top like that. Indisputed king of cheeses over the top. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it in almost unrecognizable form at this point. For Debbie from Snowflake, we have chorizo, potatoes, jalapenos and artichokes in the form of a frittata with chorizo and potatoes and jalapenos and then the bruschetta with the artichokes.